Hi everyone, welcome to eStudy.in. So in this video, we talk about constructors. So let us understand what is a constructor and some of the topics associated with constructors like constructor overloading, this keyword and temporary instances. So let's start by understanding what is a constructor. Now till now we have done, uh, we, have, we have understood uh, like what is a class, what is an object and we know what are the functions, what are methods, right? So what is a constructor? Is it a method? Is it a function? So yes, we can say constructor is a member function but it is different from the functions in the uh, in the way that uh, a constructor has the same name as that of the class okay uh, so th this is what we have to understand that a constructor is a member function which has the same name as that of the class so if you see here we have got a, a class as rectangle so if how do i know that this is a constructor i know that this is a constructor and not a ordinary function because it has got the same name as that of the class. So same name as that of the class followed by round parenthesis means it is a constructor. Now another thing is that constructor does not have any return type. So you see we have not written here void, not even void. Okay, So you will not write any return type for a constructor. Yes, public, private and protected a constructor can have these modifiers. So these we will discuss later. What is the difference? Even if you do not write public, you simply write rectangle. Still, it would be a constructor and it would be okay. Okay. So this is how we create a constructor. That means the same class name. Uh, the constructor will have the same name as the class followed by round parenthesis. Then we will open the curly brackets, close the curly brackets. Even if you do not write any statements within the constructor, that would still be okay. So here rectangle is a constructor, right? So we have understood what is a constructor. So let us uh, just go through the points again. A constructor is a member function which has the same name as that of a class. It has no return type, not even void. It is used to initialize the instance variables or data members of the class. Now let us understand what this point means. So if, if we go back here, what are the instance variables? So instance variables or data members are these L and W. These are called instance variables. So we have already understood what is an instance instance variable. And those of you who do not know, there is a video on instance variables, parameter variables and local variables. So you can go through that video. So here we know that L and W are instance variables. So a constructor is a member function which is used to initialize these instance variables. So here in the constructor, we have given an initial value of zero to both L and W. So we have initialized the data members or instance variables and that is what the constructor is used for. Okay. So now moving on, what is the need of constructors? Why do we need? They are needed to create an instance of the class. This also we will see next what, how do we create an instance and why, when is the constructor called? So here, when is a constructor called? A constructor is called when we create an object or instance of a class. We know how to create an instance or object of the class. This also has been covered in the previous videos. So we will see how the constructor is called when an object is created. Now, if you see here, we have a class called rectangle and within the class, we have two uh, data members or instance variables L and W and we have this constructor. Okay. Now in another class, in uh, we are creating an object of the rectangle class. So we are saying rectangle R1 is equal to new rectangle. Here R1 is an object or it can be called it is an instance of the rectangle class. So when we write a statement like this here rectangle R1 is equal to new rectangle. So you see this side here where we have rectangle followed by round parenthesis. So when you write this, this is a call. That is the time when you write like this, that is the time when the constructor is called. So when you write like this, so the control will go here. So that means here now the constructor is being called and the value of r1 dot length here. If you see value of r1 dot, e dot length would be zero and the value of r1 dot width would be w would be zero. The, it is zero because we have initialized the value of l and w in the constructor to be zero. So when we create an object or an instance r1, the constructor is going to be called and the value of the instance variables for this instance r1 will be zero. So this is how, now we have understood when the constructor is called. So that means when we create an instance of the class, the constructor gets called. Okay. So this is what we meant here. 
constructor is called when we create an object or an instance of a class okay now moving on we have this class here so if you see here in the previous example the constructor the we have written public in front of the constructor so when we have a public constructor we can call it from another object from another class so you see this is a different class test it is not part of this class so when the constructor is public we can create an instance or an object of the constructor in an of the class in another class okay so here we are creating an instance r1 of the rectangle class in another class okay because it is a public constructor so this is a valid statement now in the next example when you see the next example here we have the same everything remains the same but the only thing is the constructor is a private now so it is a private constructor the rest remains the same so when you have the private constructor if you write a statement similar to the previous one wherein you would try to create an object of rectangle from a different class this is wrong this is going to give you an error here because it is a private constructor so private constructor can only be called from within the same class so you see here we are from within the same class rectangle we are creating an object of the rectangle class now this is a valid statement okay so this is a valid statement whereas this is a wrong statement because the constructor is private here okay so a constructor is generally a public constructor only we normally do not create a private constructor so we what have we learned the difference between private and a public constructor so what is the difference between a private and a public constructor if a constructor is public then we can create objects of the class in non member functions that means we can create objects of the class in non member functions that means the functions which are part of another class but if the constructor is private we cannot create objects of the class in non member functions so if you see here in the previous example we created the object of this class in a member function check is a member function of the rectangle class we cannot create object of a private constructor in a non member function here this check is a non member function it is not part of the rectangle class so this is what we mean and in the previous example if you see when the constructor was public we were creating the object of this in a non member function check is a non member function of the rectangle class it is not in the rectangle class check is a function of a test class okay so this is what we mean by non member function okay so now we move on so here you can see that uh, we have types of constructors so what are types of constructors we have two types of constructors parameterized and non parameterized so what is a parameterized constructor uh, we know what are parameters because this topic has been covered so if you see this is a non parameterized constructor because we are not passing any parameters here within the constructor but if you see this constructor it has two parameters okay so it is a parameterized constructor now in the non parameterized constructors we have given the default value of 0 to both the instance variables whereas in the parameterized constructors uh, which receives two int parameters x and y we are saying l that means the value of l is equal to x and the value of w is equal to y so this is how we can create a parameterized constructor okay now so we uh, learn what is the difference between a parameterized and a non parameterized constructor so we can say the constructor which receives parameters is called a parameterized constructor and whereas the constructor which does not receive any parameters is called a non parameterized constructor okay and as an example we have already seen the example of this now moving on what is a default constructor so when a constructor when a class does not contain any explicit constructor a default constructor is provided by java compiler it is used to initialize the data members with a default value here by data members we mean the instance variables like in the class rectangle we had int l comma w so when a class does not have any explicit uh, uh, constructor so then uh, that is a uh, a default constructor is provided by java compiler okay so here had we not created these constructors okay or maybe in the previous example if we go back so here had we not created a constructor then if you create an object like this so you must be wondering then what would be called in that case a default constructor would be called if we did not have this piece of code here that means if you if you do away with this constructor here and still you would create an instance of the class which constructor would be called a default constructor would be called which is provided to us by java compiler okay so a default constructor is provided by java compiler when we do not have when a class does not have an explicit constructor okay now moving on what is constructor overloading so when a class has 
more than one constructor with different signatures. Now, what is the meaning of signature? Now, signature and uh, the what is the meaning of a signature and a prototype? Again, it has been covered in the video related to methods and functions. So, please go through that video. So, when a class has more than one constructor with different signatures, the num signatures again, but in brief, I have explained number of or type of parameter. So, signature refers to the part where we refer to number and or type of parameter. So, when a constructor with different signatures, when we have a class has more than one constructor with different signatures, it is called constructor overloading. Okay. So now we see what is constructor overloading. Okay, uh, now so you see this example of constructor overloading. So here we have a class. So this is uh, my uh, construct non-parameterized constructor which we have created. Now this is another constructor which is receiving two parameters. So it is a parameterized constructor. And again, we have a parameterized constructor, but the see, see the difference. This second parameterized constructor is receiving two int parameters, whereas a third parameterized constructor is receiving one int parameter. So we have we can do this. So we have three different constructors here: one non-parameterized and two parameterized, but but with different signatures. This one is receiving one int argument or parameter and this one is receiving two int parameters. So here the value of L and W is different, X and Y, but in this case, uh, the uh, value of L and W is both initialized to X. Okay, so now this is called constructor overloading, having more than one constructor with different signatures. Now, uh, this is how we are creating the objects. So, when I am creating the object here R1, so which constructor will be called? So, if you see here, for the instance R1, the first constructor would be called this one. Okay, because we are not passing any parameters. So, when you create the instance R2 or the object R2, which constructor will be called? This one. Okay, because we are passing two int parameters, two in, we are passing two int arguments. Now, for the third uh, third instance R three, we are passing one uh, argument or this one uh, eight, which is passing one argument. So here the third constructor would be called. So this is an example of constructor overloading. Okay, now we can move on to the next topic, which is this keyword. Now here we need to understand that this keyword is a reference to the current object or we can say it stores the address of the currently calling object okay so this keyword stores the address of the currently calling object or it is a reference to the current object and it can only be used with instance methods that means if a method has static keyword in front of it we cannot use this keyword there. and it can be used with non uh, with uh, it cannot be used with static data members that means if you have static uh, instance variables this cannot be used with that Okay, so that is all we need to understand about this keyword at this moment. Okay, now moving on, what is a temporary instance? Okay, here we just need to understand that a temporary instance is the one that because it is temporary, so it lives in the memory as long as it is being referenced or used and the explicit call to the constructor creates a temporary instance. So what do we mean by explicit call to the constructor? So let's see this example. So here we have a class rectangle and it has a constructor, parameterized constructor and uh, here we have a show function or a show method which is printing the value of L and W. Now we will see the difference between a temporary instance or an explicit constructor. So if you see here, uh, here we are creating an instance OB of the rectangle class and we are passing two arguments here 4 and 5. So ob.show will make a call to this function. But if you create your instance like this, that means you do not write this part this uh, left hand uh, side part this part if you do not write and you simply write the right hand side, side part new rectangle in that case you are creating a temporary instance so this is a temporary instance and then we are calling dot show that means instead of writing these two statements we are just writing new rectangle 8 comma 9 dot show so this will create a temporary instance and uh, it will give the value of length and width as 8 and 9 and then it will call the show method and after that the instance will be destroyed because it is no longer used so this is what we mean by temporary instance so that's it for this video and i hope you like the video and uh, please like click on the subscribe button and please click uh, please click on the like button also if you like the video please do so and thanks for watching